Hi everyone and welcome. For today's video we're going to look at a tactical training exercise and we're going to look at it in two parts. For the first part it's going to be white to play and win. And for the second part I'm going to leave it as an exercise um, for you the viewer and it's black to play and basically your job is going to be to figure out what blacks best response is and what the outcome of the game will be and f for the second part the first person to send me the correct solution I'm gonna give away um, a book it's um, the end game manual by Mark Foretsky a nice uh, book on the end game which hopefully uh, one of you will enjoy so okay let's get into the first part of the video what I'm going to encourage you to do is just to pause the video here and to, to calculate as deeply as you can um, the various variations and it's a good idea to use a notepad and just to write down the variations it will keep, keep, help you to keep track of which things you've looked at and, and give you uh, a, a methodical approach that you can use over the board later. You know, once you get into the habit of looking at candidate moves and then delving in to the variations and then discounting some and looking deeper into others, is that's an essential skill of uh, your over the board player. And I would encourage you to write the moves down rather than move the pieces on a board. Um, okay. So if you just want to go ahead and pause the video, and then I'll present the solution. Alright, before I get into the solution, I'm just going to go over quickly again what techniques I use when I'm solving a problem like this. Um, the first thing you want to do is just take a quick assessment of the position. Um, we can see that both both uh, white and black have a similar amount of material and both um, white and black have very active pieces and basically the only thing separating the two sides in this position is the the tempo I mean white has the move so he has the advantage White's king is, is quite exposed, but so is black's. And um, so, so now that we've established that um, it's, it's a fairly tactical position, we've got to start looking at the forcing moves in the position to determine if there's a direct way to win, which I already kind of hinted that there was. So um, some of the candidate moves you may have considered are things like queen, h7 check, Queen uh, G7 check, Queen F8 check, Queen H8 check, um, Bishop takes F7 check. Some of these moves look ridiculous, but you'll be surprised how often a crazy looking move for, is a, paves the way to victory. So, um, you know, don't discount anything until you've looked at it concretely and sometimes the crazy moves most of the time they're not going to work out and you'll just look at it and say no nope, that that doesn't do anything but it's good to get into the habit of considering you know all of the moves and not just the ones that look uh, promising so the solution actually starts out with the move bishop takes f7 check um, what it's going to do is force the king out into the open where it can be exposed to more checks. So king takes f7 is forced. And now there's two main reasonable attempts for white to proceed that you should have considered here. And the most natural looking one and the one that I looked at first here was queen to h7 check. And there are some ways that black could go wrong here. But provided that 
he plays the move just like king to f8. Black is fine here, and, and there's no way for white to uh, proceed because as soon as he gives up a tempo, he's going to be exposed to checks himself on the back rank and, and could possibly get checkmated. So that particular variation doesn't go anywhere. However, there's a very, very strong continuation starting out where the rook takes c7 check. And at first it appears like suicide because it seems like the queen can just take the rook and indeed it can. But it's setting up another tactic. The nice thing about a move like rook takes c7 check is that it's a very forcing move. If black doesn't capture the rook, then the rook's going to capture the queen. So it kind of forces um, black's hand, which makes it easier to calculate the resultant position. So after queen takes c7, white continues now with queen to h7 check. And no matter where the king moves, uh, the Queen falls on c7, and white has a one position. Okay, so I hope some of you were able to solve that one, and don't worry too much if you didn't. You know, the important thing is just to practice the techniques, and gradually you'll get faster at calculating, and your results will start to improve as a result of improving your tactical capabilities. So let's go back to the beginning and as an exercise t that I'm going to leave you with for the, um, the chance to win this book, um, I'd like you to analyze and calculate the position not n with black to move. We've looked at w white to move and now we're going to look at black to move. So um, please uh, send me a message if you think you know the, the, the way to continue for black and if you could um, give me the key variations and what the outcome of the game would be. Alright, well thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short video and I'll see you next time on YouTube. Goodbye.